What is up everybody, welcome back to another video. And today we are taking a look at a new string library that came out very recently at the time of this recording. And that is Vienna Symphonic Library's newest string library called Elite Strings or Synchron Elite Strings, I should say. And it's basically like um, their take on a chamber string library recorded in the Synchron stage. I believe they also have the Synchron Chamber Strings library, if I'm not mistaken, but this is a very interesting library. And let's just take a quick look at the product page before we actually dive into the instrument itself and go over a couple of the instruments and the mic positions and all that. So basically it's uh, they, they call it exceptional small string ensembles with six first violins, five seconds, four violas, four cellos, and three basses. So really true to chamber size. Um, and uh, they, they say it's extremely versatile and flexible and they can give you intimate to powerful expressions, which is very nice. And, are, and it's perfectly mixed with production ready presets, which is really cool. Price-wise, you have an introductory price of 325 euros um, for the standard library and for the full library, which includes uh, more mic positions and I believe more presets, if I'm not mistaken, it's 540 euros at the time of this recording and the regular price will be 740 for the full library. Uh, so let's jump into the session. And right off the bat, I have to say that I was a little bit intimidated in the first place because I've been using contact I've been using Contact for so many years at this point, and I really haven't used another player. I mean, I've used you know the UVI player for a little bit for some of their libraries, but um, I haven't really used East West Play. I haven't really ever used uh, Vienna's Synchron player. So it was a little bit intimidating in the first place, but I have to say um, taking, taking a few minutes to navigate around the system wasn't overly complicated for me. So that's a big plus on that end. And in terms of the actual GUI itself, it does look quite visually pleasing in my opinion. And I kind of like how the articulations and the mapping is laid out. Uh, it's, it's quite pretty, I think. So, you know, it took me a little bit of time to just kind of take a look at where things were laid out. And just a little disclaimer, I've been spending, you know, a few hours, a few days with this library. Um, so I, I maybe I'm just kind of kind of going over on the tip of the iceberg here, and there's so much depth to this library. To me, this kind of this this kind of reminds me of like Berlin Strings from OT, where it's so in depth and there's a lot of detail, a lot of sampling going on here, that it's just really impossible to cover it all in one video unless it's like a two to three hour stream. So I'm just kind of kind of kind of go over. Uh, it's it's kind of like a quick look, if you will. Um, but you see here, I've loaded in the first violins, which is six of them, and. I, I like kind of the chamber approach because you do get the detail in there and the recording quality, as you'll hear in a minute, is very, very clean. So I've loaded in the short notes, uh, legato, specifically performance legato, and there's also a detache I wanna show you as well. Uh, a big thank you to VSL, by the way, Ben, for sending me a copy to just take a look at. Um, he didn't ask me to make a video. He just kind of asked me to you know, take a look at it and share my thoughts, but I thought I'd make a video to show you my first impressions. Um, so anyway, let's go into the short notes. Let's start with the staccatos. And you can see there's two types of those uh, staccatos here. We have bold and agile. So let's just play a little bit here and have a listen to what the violins sound like. And by the way, if some samples are cutting in and out, it is because I have loaded quite a few mic positions in here. You see, I have the room mix, I have the, the solo one, ribbon one, surround, and plus the reverb as well. So if there is a bit of cutting out, it's just a bit of overload on my CPU. I think the library itself is not too heavy and it is quite playable actually. Um, as you'll listen to the legato, it is quite responsive. Um, let's hear the spiccato.
So even just from those short notes, the, the actual detail in the sound is fantastic. Like the fidelity is very, very high here. Um, and again, the interface is not overwhelming to the point where I can't really figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, you can hear it's, it's laid out in a very um, intuitive way, the main articulation, then the type of that articulation, and then the actual attack of that specific articulation, which is really nice. Uh, let's have a quick listen to the legatos here. Um, now I'm going to go with a molto vibrato because I personally like the expressive nature that strains can provide. We'll go with a normal release at the end and a soft attack to start. So let's have a listen. Let's take a look at some of these mic positions. I'll just circle through here. But at the moment, I'm only using the room mix, which is basically a mix of the rooms um, of the room, uh, you know, a mix of these different microphone positions here. But let's hear a few of these isolated. So let's hear just the solo mic by itself. Okay, so by themselves, some of them don't sound quite as good as the others, but, and, and that's kind of what we come to expect from a lot of string libraries. Uh, but yeah, I love the room mix tone. The surround has, also has a really creamy sound to it, but I actually like the, like how the, the closer mics layer in with a main room mix for a little more detail. Specifically, the solo one sounds quite nice. The ribbon itself has kind of a vintage vibe, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so layering that with a room mix is also uh, providing some cool results. So that's a, take a that's taking a look at the performance legato. There's also the expressivo patch, which is um, articulation, which is quite cool. It's like the notes swell in after a second. So. You know, so it's a very specialized effect. It's not something you're gonna want all the time, but. 
um, as you know, as it is, it's really, really cool. Um, also, one more thing that I kind of wanted to mention, and it took me uh, a little bit of time to figure it out, but basically you see these are grayed out. So this just means that those articulations are not loaded in at the moment, which of course saves on CPU, which is great. Um, you can't do that with Cinematic Studio Strings, by the way, uh, for example, I mean. Um, so you'd have to just purge. But in this case, yeah, you can you can purge the articulations you're not using by double clicking on the letter, basically. So by double clicking, you actually either load or unload. So in this case, um, we have the performance detache loaded. Let's have a listen to that. So overall, what's the sense we're getting from this library? Tonally, it is very clear, it's very crisp, and you see it comes with some pretty unique articulations. Harmonics we have, we have pizzicato, so the standard stuff here, but dynamics, we get crescendos, uh, you know, decrescendos. There's also agile performance detache. So um, you, get, you get quite a range of articulations, and the overall tonal quality and fidelity is quite nice. Um, and that's just in the violin. So let's have a quick listen to the celli, and I'll try to demonstrate the legato there as well. All right, so we've got the celli loaded up here, and by default, again, we see we have the room mix loaded up. Um, in terms of samples themselves, you can see it's uh, the, the main room mix loaded up with uh, basically 3,700 samples. And so far, I've uh, I've played about 43 megabytes of them. And in terms of the actual like things you can tweak, you have humanizing, you have um, amount of humanization, you have reverb, Mercado attack, you have filters, you have all this stuff, which for me, I don't do a ton of uh, ton of that, as long as the dynamics and expression are kind of mapped to the same fader, I, I tend to go with what's given to me here. Notice here how expression is mapped separately to, uh, to volume, but whatever. So anyway, taking a look at the celli, let's uh, play through a little bit of this legato here. So. Okay. So all in all, um, the legato style in general, I feel is specifically dedicated to styles of music that are not entirely romantic. And what I mean by that is a library compared to this, we, we could say like Cinematic Studio String, CSS, the long form legato transitions are recorded in such a way that it's very, very, um, it, it borders on portamento, a lot of the slurs, and it creates this really passionate, really romantic vibe that is not as, um, I guess, present in this style of library. For me, when I think of VSL, I always think of more traditional, classical style sampling. And, um, you know, when, when I tried this library out, I kind of got that sense. Like it's, it's more clean, it has more of a controlled sound to it, and it's very detailed, very you know, in your face in a way. And that's, that's not a bad thing. That's just a different characteristic of the library. Whereas CSS, it's a little darker. It has a little more dirt in it. It's a little more colorful. So it's a completely different style of approach. But for me that, you know, I, I think that's a really good thing in that you have multiple options and more colors at your disposal to mix and match together. And I was thinking like, okay, we could probably layer, you know, this library with something like CSS because they have such different sonic signatures and different, uh, purposes, right? CSS dripping with vibrato, um, so much like emotion in every single sample. Whereas this one is a little more, a uh, little more straightforward in a way, right? Even with the multi vibrato, it doesn't has have as much um, vibrato as something like CSS. 
And this one can tend to play a little faster as well because it, it is more agile. There's less players and you can hear the detail in every single sample that you play. So it's a different approach, but for me, myself, I would see myself using this as an extra layer on top of my, my, my songs, my productions, because if you know my music, I like to write the more romantic style because I kind of write like the Disney style music. So for me, it's a matter of just layering and finding the right combinations of sounds that create the best result. And I always find that if I'm layering, um, you know, CSS with Vista, it gives me good results because Vista is brighter, even though it's also very romantic and, and vibrato heavy. But I feel like something like this layered with CSS would probably give me a slightly more neutral sound that would be more applicable in different situations. So anyway, um, big thanks again to VSL uh, for sending me a copy of this library. Again, it is very, very playable. I think it responds very well under the fingers very quickly. And we've only brushed the tip of the iceberg here. Like I've, I've only dragged in two patches and showed you, you know, some of the sounds, but if you really want to go deeper into the library, check out Vienna Symphonic Library's YouTube channel. They have a, um, some tutorial videos on this library already. And there's been um, a number of other reviewers who have taken a deeper look into the library, but I wanted to share this with you just to give you a sense of my first impressions on it. And um, if you're looking for like a chamber strings library that can do a lot of stuff and it's very agile, then this is the one, uh, definitely one to look into, you know? And what's really great is that VSL have a 14 day uh, refund policy or, you know, try it, try it first. And then, you know, if you don't like it, they can give you your money back. And that's something not enough developers do, but big kudos to them for doing that. And it, you know, they, but the only thing is you do need an e-licensor. So you do need a USB key dedicated to unlocking uh, the library. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't have a dongle, you know, or an e-licensor, you will need one to register this library. I think they're trying to shift on, over to an online um, way of doing this in the future, but at the moment you still need the, the uh, USB key, just so you know. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. And hey, look, if you're interested in sample libraries in general and you want to you want to know more about my personal preferences, I highly recommend checking out my sample library buyer's guide. It's a totally free guide that goes over my personal recommendations on what I use on a daily basis. And uh, I hope it gives you a good insight into what to look for when you're uh, on the market for another, another library, whether that's strings, woodwinds, brass percussion, whatever it is, there's a lot of choice out there. So I want to give you some clarity uh, and, um, you know, give you my recommendations based on my personal direction and what I do uh, on a day to day. So it's totally free. It's the first link in the description box. If you click it, you can just download it right away for your uh, own use. And um, yeah, thank you so very much for watching. If you have this library already, let me know. If you don't, let me know if you're interested, what you like or dislike about it so far. Uh, definitely be interested to, to hear your thoughts on the library, but I think it's another winner from VSL. It is my first product of there so far, but um, uh, definitely an interesting player. Uh, yeah, like pretty fun to work with. And uh, I could definitely see myself using this in the future, just even just due to the playability and the tone quality and the potential of layering possibilities. I think, um, yeah, it, it's up there for sure. So anyway, thank you so very much for watching. I'll catch you in another video very soon and uh, see you then. Bye everybody.